folks, it's Kelly. Um, I just thought I'd give a few for stroke mini just mini ish review of my experience at Twin Lakes. Um, you guys who have followed me on Instagram, which is this is my Melton, will have seen that I kind of snapped the whole day, and I did give a few hints and tricks on that, which I'll reinstate in this reiterate in this video. Um, but I also wanted to kind of give like a general review on my thoughts. So we arrived at Twin Lakes yesterday, this being myself and my partner, um, around about 11, 11 ish because our taxi arrived earlier than our pre-book time. Shout out to Elaine, thank you for your lift yesterday. Um, so we arrived what we call relatively early compared to the fireworks. And because we arrived early, we were able to walk on basically every ride at the park. So, and the ones that we didn't straight walk on, we were waiting for the train to finish. So we managed to walk on Run Runner. We managed to walk on Buffalo Stampede. We managed to walk, walk on Icarus Flowers. We all, um, was able to, I've forgotten the name of the pirate ship, but was straight walk on and that. Um, the log flume was close to a walk on as well and we were straight able to walk on Trauma Tower and actually because Trauma Tower's queue was so quiet whilst we were having our lunch we actually saw a party of children and teenagers that rode the ride about three four times in a row because it was that quick a queue. We were also able to walk straight on Excalibur and we were also able to walk straight on Jester's Revenge which was very nice very convenient. Um, so if you are wanting to go on the rides, which obviously you would because it's including your ticket there, my advice is to arrive early because what Lee, my partner and I discovered was that after around about four o'clock, half past four, the park got significantly busier and therefore by proxy queue started to build up. And that then leads to my next point. I am autistic. I think I've spoken about this before a couple of times on the My Mountain stuff. And I'm also mindful that we have quite a lot of autistic people in the area. You know, we've got Mencap, we've got Birchwood. I personally work at a school for autism in Nottingham, which actually, when you think about it, it's not too far away, etc. For all of you who personally have a sensory... Um, processing condition like autism, ADHD, etc., or have somebody in your party that has those particular conditions, or in general are noise sensitive, be aware that the indoor play areas, so this is Buccaneers Island and Labyrinth, can get incredibly loud. This is not only due to the fact that you can hear customers, but both indoor areas have multiple rides inside, which I will discuss a bit more detail um, in a minute. And because you have all of these people and you have all of these rides and then both areas have arcade machines, plus your background noise music, it can be very sensory. I personally have no shame in admitting that they got to a point between us doing the rides and the firework display that I said to Lee quite openly that I needed to go and to the play area, find myself a corner and hide and decompress. So I found myself a quite nice little tunnel area, which I hid in until I realised I accidentally scared a child and had to move on. Um, so, and that's me at 28, who's kind of aware now and knows when she needs to go and regulate. So if you have, and also the fireworks themselves are loud. I personally, towards the end when I was capturing the footage and the photos that you guys have seen, had to put my headphones in because by about 10, 15 minutes in, fireworks were loud, my ears were starting to hurt, so I ended up having to put music on. Um, so if you are looking to go next year and you or someone else in your party has those particular needs bear that in mind once again go back to my tip of if you're wanting to do the play areas you're wanting to do um the rides go early and then look at something like the outdoor areas 
or the farm later on where it's getting busier to help that particular ascabet um, before the display itself and then try and stand further back from the lake which is where the fireworks tend to come off at um, and if your party have them bring headphones be it ear defenders noise cancelling etc right so what i'm going to do next is do a breakdown of each of the rides that lee and i did and then go into the purple more top tips so first ride we did was run runner think of it as a my first spinning coaster i quite liked it i thought given the fact it's like a beginner's spinning coaster there was actually a little bit of speed to it especially as you were going backwards around the corner um you did a couple of loops included in your ride and for a walk on ride it was a good little fun time you can find this one at buccaneers island before the play area um next ride we did i'm trying to remember which one it was um i think we did icarus skyfly next so with icarus and skyfly you are basically face lying flat on a cage they say they pop you down and then you kind of fly around sort of like a chair ride but obviously you're face down in cage if you are claustrophobic have a look at the ride before you get on just because you are locked into that like face down position um and it can be a little bit uncomfortable if you are a, a certain frame so please bear in mind that mine but the ride itself you know when she was strapped in and got moving was good fun um then next to because the side flies you have the pirate ship um probably one of my favorite rides of the day um we found sitting at the back like every pirate ship is the best way to get the experience um especially if you're a thrill seeker if you want something a bit tamer keep to the front because you only really got the stomach drop of someone who rode the front and the back towards midway through the end of the ride whereas if you go at the back you're getting that from your second third swing so bear that in mind if you're judging the party like judging the speed of your clients um after that we did trauma tower which is the drop tower in the labyrinth play area very good fun the drops are sudden you do not know when they're coming the height is enough that thrill seekers can feel like they're up on the ground and people that are doing rides for the first time aren't necessarily intimidated you're basically going to the top of the area and then dropping down um and the fact you don't know what to expect is a good time and i had a bit of a giggle on that one um and then what else did we do oh buffalo stampede so fun fact for you guys that don't already know buffalo stampede was actually originally at american adventure and then it moved and came to us it's a it's a fun ride um think of it as like a step up from your mercury mini coasters and your rum runners in terms of like speed duration height etc it is a good ride obviously it's not the most like fast whizzy round because one the age of it because you've got to remember the american adventure was closed what oh good 15 20 years ago now plus so that would mean all the time there plus the time here and also you got to bear in mind this is a family theme park you know lee and i went because it was one of the few days that um that we did not need to bring a child hence why i came around with my camera and thought i was going to get all the footage now and uh, so bear in mind we are not the time you know we had fun but we're not necessarily the target demographic for that roller coaster which is why um we you know it was fun it was relatively quick probably the quickest ride of the park but you know you're not going to get to like Rita or icon speeds on it realistically um good fun though it's a it's a nice little family coaster um what was the next ride we did oh wind in the Lolos at buccaneers island i'm not going to spoil it for you for those of you who've never ridden it however I would recommend this ride for very young audiences as opposed to teenagers and older kids because young children have the purity and the naivety generally obviously you get exceptions um 
to be able to appreciate the ride as opposed to the experience that we had where we were a little bit weirded out in a way. And when I covered it on the Insta story, I did have a couple of people DM me explaining that they also had a similar experience. But I would encourage you guys, if you have someone younger with you, to go on and see if you agree. But for me, that was probably the least, my personal least favourite ride on the, of the day. But obviously, once again, bear in mind, Lee and I aren't necessarily the target audience for that ride. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, and then we did Excalibur. Excalibur's fun. I like Excalibur. I think Excalibur is basically a giant um, sky fly, like a miniature sky flyer swing ride. It's great fun. I like it. You can get a really good view of mountain from the top. It's not too high and not too intimidating for younger kids. But for someone who's an adult, I found the right amount of thrill there. And we had a good time on that one. We actually wanted to re-ride it at the end of the day. However, we're not able to do so. And this breaks me down to a little tip. Now, some theme parks will allow you to close, like not close, queue. And as long as you queue before the closing time, you are able to get out on that ride. So let's say, for example, a theme park closed at 8 o'clock. If you were in that queue at 759 no matter how long that queue is altogether, you would be able to board that ride. You would just leave the park a bit later. Twin Lakes is not the case. I just We discovered this yesterday doing Excalibur. Well, I say doing Excalibur, attempting to read up ride Excalibur in the evening. They close the ride bang on closing time, unless you have something like the log flume, which closes closed earlier due to the lighting issue i did suggest so please bear that in mind if you are looking to get on a ride or looking to do a re-ride in the afternoon evening we i'll be honest i was a little bit disappointed because the queue hadn't there was no indication that we couldn't get on that ride before the closing time because the queue for that particular ride hadn't closed off um which is something I did say to the operator afterwards. And behind us was a good queue. Like you could easily, the, the queue line behind us was full, um, basically, in terms of the right bit. So if you are planning a trip and you are looking to do a last minute ride before the end of the day, consider it, have a look if the queue has already been closed off, which was the case with the log flume, I'll give them that. Um... You know, folks, um, but, well, yeah. Um, but if they don't have it closed off for whatever reason, be it staffing, not got gay, etc., use your judgment and consider the fact that that ride is closing bang on closing time, not last queue at closing time. So that way, if you are travelling with a younger party, they will not be disappointed that they cannot board that ride, which obviously you do not want as a parent. Uh, what else have I talked about? So spoken about Century, spoken about the rides. Um, we also did the farm. I like the farm. The farm was cute. I, I had quite a fun time petting the animals um, and taking photos of them. And you would have seen um, my little attempt at trying to get the strutting goats on TikTok. Um, if you're not following us on, t on TikTok yet, on the My Mountain side, it is ticked up my mountain um so we did try and i did attempt to try and get a strutting goat for that which was quite fun and managed to get some pets of the other animals which was great um very very fun little way to kill some time typically is quieter compared to your indoor play areas in your ride so once again as i went back to my sensory people's if it gets a bit crowded, that area is a good little place to visit because it tends to be a bit more chill, a bit more quieter. Patting animals is always good fun. And then I think after that, it just covers the play areas. 
I like the play areas. The play areas were fun. I had a good, as I already said with the regulation, I did spend a little bit of time in the labyrinth play area. Um, decent size. Little bit of something for everybody in there. Multiple slides of different kinds in there. Um, from your traditional tube slide all the way up to a vertical drop slide, which I'll be honest, I personally did not intend not care for because I saw a very young child flying down it and he basically was down in about a second and I'm pretty sure he was somewhere towards the other end where I couldn't even see him. <laughs> so I was a bit like, yeah, let's let's not do that one. But for those of you that are a bit more <laughs> less you know, a bit more of a thrill seeker in regards to those slides, there's plenty of options there. And then you've got your traditional slides into ball pits. A couple of other fun bumpy slides, one with a mat, etc. Um, definitely the best play area that I did because I did that one, and then I did the castle on where Excalibur was that area. Um, when I ran up to do their mat slide, and out the two I preferred that one, but the castle one is also decent. There's lots to do there, and is also a good one if you want to get out the crowds. Because as I already said, those areas, those indoor areas, Buccaneers and um, Labyrinth can get busy and quite loud with everything that's going on in there. Um, what else did we do? Oh, I did the tube. Um, the tubing was fun. I like the tube. The tubing has made me go semi-viral on Instagram, which surprised me. I think I'm on like over 200 likes on the reel and counting, which was quite funny. Um, just be aware of the tubing that there were, when I visited yesterday, free tubes. Um, so you may see, once again, if you're at peak times, you may see a bit of a queue for that run. But it's a good, it's a good little 30 second fun whizzing around. In terms of food, I got the prices of the food, but... Because Lee and I brought our own lunch with us, I never actually got round to trying any of the food. Food-wise, you're looking at six fifty to eight fifty for a meal. Um, your meal including chips and a drink. Food-wise, menu, you're looking at your traditional theme park fare. So burgers, chips, chicken nuggets, hot dogs, jacket potatoes, etc. So if you are looking for something of a little bit more quote unquote adventurous palette, my advice to you would be either bring something in or wait until have something as a light snack and then go into town and check out the various restaurants in the actual town centre, which may cater to your more adventurous palette. Um, and then for the fireworks themselves, I enjoyed it it was a good 15 minute display because we were right by the lake we got a really good view habit allowed one as i've already discussed and it was very bright it was very colorful very pretty um it was just the fireworks themselves there weren't anything like accompanying them but it was a good 15 minute display um very bright very colorful very much can see why there's a spectacular name as advertised by Twin Lakes as well. And it was, you know, good time. Like, like the firework display. So my final thoughts. So Lee and I paid $18.95 each. So that included our park, so that was for our fireworks tickets. And then we paid another 19 20 pounds which we split for a taxi from his flat to twin lakes and back um with our return back being slightly more costly i think it was 860 for going there and 1060 for coming back if memory serves me correctly um because you know we were going after we were going into night territory um so basically we looked at paying altogether about 50 about um about 
30 quid each, give or take, for by the time you put transport in. So that's something you have to bear in mind. And obviously, for those of you that drive, you would be bringing your car and there is free parking there. Just be aware that at the end of the night, the traffic leaving the park can be really bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We, Lee and I had booked a taxi for quarter past eight. The taxi didn't get to us till about 20, 25 past because he got caught in the traffic and therefore couldn't actually come down to the park to pick us up. We, you know, I was tracking on the Elaine's app like, a minute and stuck there etc etc and i think if memory serves me correctly we waited about another 10 minutes to leave the park from the front gates to the actual out of the park so as well and that was us booking the taxi at quarter past thinking that we were going to escape most of the crowds how oh, how wrong i was um so if you are booking a taxi or you are driving up to Twin Lakes, my advice to you would be leave before closing, like early before closing. So let's say, for example, it's like yesterday where the park closes at eight o'clock. I would look at leaving quarter to 22 to beat that rush or looking at half past eight if they'll let you stay that long so that you'll be in that rush of cars as well. So would that ticket, so the £18.95 ticket, let's ignore the transport, be worth it if it's still that cost next year? I would say yes, barring you do the following. If you arrive bang on 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, it is a value for money because on your ticket, you are paying for the full day. So you are paying from 10 o'clock in the morning all the way up to 8 o'clock at night. So that is 10 full hours. We got 9 full hours because we left a bit later um, and got in the park about an hour later. So we got a good nine few nine good hours in there, basically doing all of the thrill rides and doing a couple of reruns as well. Which ones did we rerun? Um, we reran the pirate ship, attempted to rerun, um, and then attempted to rerun Excalibur as well. So if you do that and spend the whole day, yes, it is good value for money. And if you are going to buy that ticket for the firework display, my advice is that you do so because of the fact earlier on in the day you can do the walk-ons um, and get all your rides that you need to do ticked off. I would not say it's good value for money if you do what a lot of people did yesterday, which is why you've got the walk-ons earlier on, which is arrive about half past four or five o'clock because that's when the crowd started to pick up, etc. Because if you look at it that way, you're looking at a free three and a half hour slot which is around about the same time that the Lights After Dark event was. And if memory serves me correctly, I paid around a tenner per ticket for that. I'll have to double check and get back to you. That's the Fabulous Night Nights. So I think I paid around a tenner. I will double check and get back to you about those costings and put those costings in another, in a reply to this review. So if, you are doing that, it is not the best value for money. For you to get that value for money, you have to be in from open 11, 12 o'clock at most and then go through the rate, the hours until close to get truly get your money's worth. And I will say that. Um, as well, oh, I forgot to do the gift shop. That was it. Yeah, we did cover through the gift shop. My main bit of feedback reference to the gift shop in fact, I'll just do my improvements now. Just tick it all off and then that sign off the video. So my little things for improvements are and things that you need to consider. One, the gift shop itself doesn't have that much Twin Lakes merchandise. I noticed this when we looked in there yesterday. 
There are a couple of hoodies and a couple of cute little bubble hats for Extreme Scream. And the rest of it is toys. There wasn't anything that we could see that was specific Twin Lakes branding, which I thought was a shame because I would have quite happily have walked out with a Twin Lakes pen and a notebook for work, but wasn't able to do so because I couldn't find one, which obviously then meant that that was less money going into the gift shop. So that's something to consider. Um, another thing that you need to consider is... Um, Another bit of feedback which I touched on was the fact that the closing of a ride wasn't necessarily clear um, for certain rides. Some were better than others, for instance. The log flume was clear. They'd put a big, massive metal gate in front of it. So when people were turned away there, it was because they tried to go past the big metal gate or cut through the fence, as opposed to looking at the big metal gate in front of them and going, hmm... It's blocking the entrance. That makes me think that we can't go in there. Um, I'll be honest, when Lee and I had our coke and we were watching it all go down, it was a little bit amusing. I have I have no shame in admitting it was quite interesting just watching all these people blatantly ignore this giant metal gate. But for things like Excalibur, when we tried to rewrite that, there was no clear indication. So that's another suggestion, I would say, for there to be a bit more of a clearer indication there. And... Lastly, I am looking forward for them to have a new thrill ride. Now, I invert my thrill ride because I'm not expecting Twin Lakes to put in a multi-looping roller coaster. It would be great if they did, but given the target market, they're probably not going to. But I'm looking forward to seeing something along the same thrill calibre as your as your pirate ship, Trauma Tower log flume buffalo stampede group so i'm not looking i'm not expecting like a super duper loop de loop ride but i'm expecting and looking forward to something opening that falls within that particular group as well so final thoughts good day out if you are booking tickets for next year for the firework display make sure that you book them and attend the whole day. And be in mind, if you have sensory processing or someone in your party does, that there will be areas in the park that get loud at certain points in the day during peak hours. And ensure that you guys, if you're going to attend, have a plan in place so that you will keep happy and well. If you are Wanting a plan on how to go about it, you are more than welcome to DM the page and I can walk you guys through it based on my personal experience. Once again, I do want to reinforce that I will openly admit that Lee and I are not the target demographic for Twin Lakes, personally. But a lot of what we have suggested would also account for those of you that have got children as well. So that's my review. That's my thoughts. If you've got any questions, feel free to DM the page or drop them in the comments as well. And I will do my best to answer them. All right. I'm going to see you guys later. Bye.